Welcome to Crazy Nurse RN Hub, where learning becomes a tradition. Come, join me as we explore the multifaceted worlds of nursing. Hi there students, my name is Crystal Merdukanes and I am your research instructor. For today's topic, we have the concept of control in research. The researcher seeks to control the extraneous variables to determine the true nature of the relationship between the independent and dependent variables. Extraneous variables have an irrelevant association with the dependent variables and can confound or bias the testing of the research hypothesis. There are two basic types of extraneous variables. First, we have your intrinsic. These are intrinsic factors to the subjects of the study. Another one is external. These are external factors stemming from the research situation. Now let's proceed to controlling the external factors. The researcher's aim in controlling external factors is to maintain constancy of conditions. One condition, the environment, has been found to exert a powerful influence on people's emotions and behavior. To maintain constancy of the environment, the researcher needs to pay attention to the environmental context within which the study is to be conducted. For example, in conducting a survey, the researcher should attempt to conduct all interviews in basically the same kinds of environment. If you decide to interview in an office, do so for all interviewers. Another external factor is often controlled is the time factor. The dependent variable could be influenced by the time of the day or time of year in which data are collected. It would be desirable to strive for same time of the day or year across subjects. Another one is sameness of communications to the subjects is another aspect to maintain. You will certainly inform the participant about the purpose of the study. What use will be made of the data? Why the study? Sponsored by whom? This should be prepared ahead as in a letter so that the same message is delivered to all subjects. In studies involving an intervention, care should be taken to adhere to the process according to the research protocol or format, which is another factor that we need to consider in controlling the external factors. For example, in testing the efficacy of an herbal plant, the researcher should follow the same preparation and administration. Now let's have controlling the intrinsic factors. Researchers describe ways of controlling extraneous variables associated with subject characteristics such as age, racial origin, educational qualification, occupation, religious affiliation, gender, and family background. And here are the ways to control intrinsic factors. So we have here four ways. First, we have randomization. Second is homogeneity. Blocking is the third one. And lastly, we have matching. First, we have randomization. In selecting subjects by random, Characteristics of subjects tend to equalize, thus controlling all possible sources of extraneous variation. For example, you are interested in assessing the effect of a program of physical exercise training for the elderly. Characteristics such as age, gender, history of smoking, former occupation could affect the program. These extraneous variables could be controlled by randomization. Next is homogeneity. This method consists of taking only subjects who are homogeneous with respect to those variables that are considered extraneous. For example, if you consider that gender could be an extraneous factor in the study on physical training, then include only men in the study. 
if age were the extraneous variable, then take only participants of the same age. No variation of age is included in the study. Another one is blocking. This method includes the extraneous variable in the design of the study. For example, in the physical training program, if gender were thought to be a confounding variable, it could be built into the study design as shown in the systematic diagram of a 2x2 two two randomized block design. So in this design, we have two groups. We have the study group with intervention and control group without intervention. Then we have two rows which represents our gender. So we have male and female. In any study where an intervening variable such as age is considered a difficulty, entering age as a part of the design could control that variable. And lastly, we have matching. This involves using knowledge of subject characteristics to form comparison groups. Let us use the example physical training. If a matching procedure for extraneous variables, age and gender was being considered, we would need to match each subject in the experimental group with one in the control group in age and gender. Subjects would be assigned randomly and there we would actually produce a randomized block design. This may be shown as a systematic diagram of a 2x2 two two randomized block design. So if you try to notice, we have here two groups, the study group with intervention and the control group without intervention. And we have the gender and age in each row. So we have here the same number of men in the study group as well as the same number of men in the control group. The same is true with women. And also for the age, we have the same age bracket as to the study group and the control group. This is one way to control the extraneous variables. Also, we have the use of a control group as a method of controlling extraneous variables. All the major activities in an experimental research design lead to the control of extraneous variables, namely by manipulating, by randomizing, by carefully preparing the research protocol, and by using a control group. Control group means a group of subjects whose performance on a dependent variable is used as basis for evaluating the performance of the study group, which is the one that receives the intervention on the same independent variable. I believe that ends our lecture on the concept of control in research. If you think this lecture video helped you, you may click the like and share button and spread good vibes. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more informative and interesting lecture videos. This has been Crazy Nurse RN. Have a nice day and see you in my next lecture video. Goodbye!